WLBB, Carrollton, News Talk, 1330, FM 106.3. Good Friday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. I'm your host, Colin Worthington. If you're watching us on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page, you can already see my guest and you can see for the 437th consecutive Community Voice Program, I'm out dressed. Gil McDougal, he is one of three candidates running for mayor for the city of Villa Rica and uh, kind enough to travel a little south to talk to us uh, this morning. Gil, good to see you. It was quite a trek down here. Yeah, <laughs> well, it was, it was cold this morning. It was cold. It was, I guess this was the coldest morning I've we've had this season. Yeah, probably since uh, you know, February or March. We'll have to check out those details later on today. <laughs> but, uh, again, Gil is one of three candidates seeking the uh, job for mayor of Villa Rica to um, – uh, start a new term, actually. Jeff Reese decided not to seek re-election this year. That's and, right. Uh, left the door open for uh, the three candidates that we do have, and we'll talk about them as we uh, do go through the program a little bit. And I do want to remind you, early voting is going on this week. Today is actually the last day for early voting. Um, polling place in Villa Rica for early voting is, is at Powell, Powell Park. And as you explained, that is for Carroll and Douglas County residents. That is the one place they can go vote early today, the last day. That's right. It's at 4.30, 5 o'clock, the close-up. 5 o'clock. Okay. And then, of course, Election Day is Tuesday. And uh, what polling places will be open in Villa Rica for that? On so Tuesday? Powell Park will be open for Carroll County residents on Election Day. And Villa Rica, uh, not Villa Rica, uh, Mirror Lake Elementary School will be open for Douglas County residents. On election day. On election day. Seven to Tuesday. seven. Right. And, That's right. Uh, as he said, it does close at seven. We'll be at the Carroll County Elections Office. We're going to broadcast live from seven o'clock until closing time. So uh, tune in to News Talk 1330 FM 106.3 or uh, KISS 102.7. We'll have um, all the information from election night for you. And perhaps Gil will pop down there after seven o'clock before he heads back to, uh, to Villa Rica to, uh, to listen to the rest of the program at a gathering that he has planned. And if you want to talk about that uh, a little bit later on, we can as well. Um, aside from the fact that you're running for mayor, who are you, Gil? What are you about? Well, I have. Uh, I grew up in Villarica. I'm uh, 45 years old, and I've spent all of those years in Villarica, except a short time when I was uh, in the Navy. And um, but outside of that, I grew up in Villarica. Um, I am a father. I have uh, three boys and three dogs. Uh, I live in the Ward Four uh, part of. Villarica, and I've represented that ward for the last three years, uh, only resigning to um, step up to run for this position. Uh, I think I resigned in, in August, just before uh, qualifying. Um, but I've lived in Villarica all my life, and I uh, have a business there. I have a real estate company there, and uh, I'm also a foster parent. I've been doing that for about 10 years. So, uh, uh, I, but at the same time, doing all those things, I've still found time to be a part of, of Villarica and uh, and the governing body, and uh, I've enjoyed all that. We do several programs on, on foster parenting throughout the year, um, and uh, we have some close relations with radio stations, too, that have done that. And obviously a real big need in, in Carroll County and in West Georgia. Is a similar need in Douglas County? Yeah, I think the, the need in Douglas County is, is pretty significant. We, uh, on a regular basis, had multiple kids. I mean, I was thinking about this the other day, and – I believe it was just a few years ago in Halloween, we had six foster kids. So there was nine kids in my house for that Halloween. So, but yet the, the need is, is very high. Um, and, and I would encourage anybody who uh, has any interest in being a foster parent to reach out to your local uh, DFACS department and inquire about, about doing that. Do you remember what it was that motivated you to take that on? Yeah, I was uh, adopted. Um, and I had a lot of opportunities, uh, I, th- I felt like early in life, but I also had a lot of challenges and, um, I, I knew a couple of folks who were, uh, worked with, it, with foster kids and they had come to me and said, would you please, uh, you know, consider doing this. And I didn't really think that it was for me and, uh, it, it is very challenging, but once I took in a couple of these kids and, you know, we made them part of everything we did because I would, you know, we do a lot of family trips, go out of town a lot, and uh, I would just bring them in, and they would be part of our family. My, my kids accepted them immediately, uh, and so we would, you know, we would take them and, and uh, make them part of our family for, you know, whatever period of time was needed, and then they would move on 
for different reasons. I mean, kids are in the system for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's abuse, sometimes it's neglect. Uh, sometimes the, the families just had a tragedy and they end up in, in, the, in the system and just need a place, a, you know, shelter and food and a home until it's time to move on. But it's been very rewarding. I've, been, I've enjoyed it very much. I've done less of it. Uh, once I decided to run for mayor, I, I had to notify the department. I can't do any more for right now. Let's let's take a break on it. And they were all very understanding, but they keep my number right there on speed dial. <laughs> so I, I suspect I'll be getting a call as soon as this is over. Gil McDougal, one of three candidates running for a mayor in the city of Villarica. Uh, city council member elected three years ago. What uh, Why did you determine in your early 40s it was uh, okay? And what, maybe something, a specific issue motivated you to uh, run for that seat? Well, not really. I had been involved uh, already, and I worked pretty closely with the, the current council member at that time. And Who was that? It was Mike Williamson. Mike, that's right. Uh, and we would regularly discuss issues that were coming before the council, and, and I always thought it was great that Mike reached out to people within the ward and had discussions about everything that was going on. And one day he came to me, and his mother-in-law had uh, – been diagnosed with cancer and he said we're going to have to we're going to have to move and uh and take care of her and they did but he asked me to run for that seat and I said I need to talk to my kids about it because even though I was at a place in my business where I could kind of you know I had the extra time I just didn't know if it would work right for for the family at the time Mm -hmm. The kids were very supportive of it, and so I decided to do it. And it turned out that was a a special election. turned out to be four people decided they also wanted to run, including me, so three additionals. And we ran in the 2016 election and got elected there. Um, I knew going into it that it was going to be tough work, but but I never really hung my hat on being a politician, so it didn't matter to me. I thought I would just go in and do what's right and then move on. And once you get in there and you find out really how significant the issues are, because you don't know, if you don't attend, and I'm going to say every single meeting, can you miss one here and there? Maybe. But every single meeting you need to be at to understand what is really going on intimately with the financial situation in the city. So once I got in there, I realized, man, we got a lot of work to do. And we're not going to get it done overnight. And I knew that. But I also knew we had to begin, and so we did that. I found it to be incredibly rewarding to be a part of doing big things and protecting the financial future of Villa Rica because that's exactly what we're doing over there. And uh, I've found it to be very rewarding. I've been excited about it. Villa Rica, I think it's safe to say they're known for not having the shortest of meetings, Uh, and that's why they've kind of stretched out those work sessions. They're doing two meetings a month now, and they're both – pretty lengthy meetings and I will say this if you go to those meetings or if you watch those meetings on uh, Villa Rica TV uh, for a lot of the topics you are speaking up and for a lot of those topics you're bringing out paperwork and you're reading this stuff so how much time are you investing looking into all these things that, that end up being discussed at those meetings so I would say that easily and I tell people this um when they're thinking about running for office and easily you're going to spend 30 hours a week just preparing for for the information that you need when it's time to, to go to a meeting. Um, I really don't understand how a person who has a full-time job could even think about being a council member, let alone a mayor. Uh, mayors are absolutely required to be at a number of functions over and above that of a council member. So I spend a considerable amount of time doing it. Now, can you just show up to meetings and vote? You could. But that causes problems because then you don't understand what you're voting on, and once we're done, you you know, I, it's not uncommon for somebody to say, hey, I, what, what was that really about? And that, that occurred more in the beginning of me being there. But I think, as you point out, as time went on, I found a way to try to bring out into the meeting for everyone the pertinent parts of what we were doing, uh, which, you know, allowed us to, to be more informed as we move forward on all these issues. But it, the, the, your question is, about how long, uh, about how much time you spend on this. I would say easily 30, 30 yeah. hours a week. You do talk about, I did refer to the fact that you do have paperwork, and it does seem like a lot of those topics you will bring out and have a comment on and maybe reiterate what it's about. Do you believe that maybe the rest of the council and the mayor enjoys that? Do you think that's something that they'd be like, you know, I had my own opinion on here and, and you're expressing this. Do you think that's a good thing to bring to those council meetings? Well, even though you point out that our meetings are long, I don't think that there's a whole lot of repetition that goes on. Um, 
and most of the time the council members now because I you know as time has gone on I've found my groove everybody's found their groove I think they've already heard most of what I have say uh, am about to say uh, probably not collectively but individually because I've always reached out to every single council member before every meeting days before or sometimes earlier in the day of the meeting to discuss the issue uh, and to hear what they have to say. I mean, it, it, this way we can have some better understanding of what we're about to walk into. So I do think they appreciate it, but I also uh, think that they don't find it repetitive, and that's important. But the public, a lot of what we're doing for me is making sure the public has information that they may not have had before. Even though all of our packets, everything's public, you can go out and pull this stuff up and, and look at it yourself. Um, if you're not in these meetings, you don't get to have the back and forth and the understanding and the questions um, to be able to understand the packet. And what happened? You get that succinct. You know, three, you're going to pay attention to the first three lines of the story when it's put out in, in whatever media. Um, you are the only of the three candidates that does have political experience. I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, and, and only one with political experience in Villarica as well. Do you any reason to think that's uh, not a benefit? No, absolutely not. I think it is uh, a crucial benefit. Uh, I, I don't really pay a lot of attention to the noise that goes on in the campaign. I, I pretty much ignore all the, the silly stuff. But I think somebody said, well, somebody said you only had three years experience. I think when you stack that up against zero, uh, that's pretty good experience. But a lot of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about experience is the interactions that you have, the relationships that you have with the various elected officials across the counties, across the city, and across the state, because you have to work with these people. When you can walk into a room and you already know them, they already know you, that makes a difference. You're able to move right on past all of the, the pleasantries of you know who you are and, and where you come from. So I think experience is, is probably... I mean, one of the if, if you ask me what distinguishes me, I think the experience does it. I, I was this is this really is kind of a, a strange analysis in a way. But I was on a flight a couple of weeks ago and I saw this young fella that I thought maybe had just gotten his license coming on board to fly. And I thought, I hope he's got somebody else with him. Also, oh, he was going to fly the plane. He was going to fly the plane. Right. Yeah. And uh, he did. He had an older fella come with him. But I thought about that experience makes a difference <laughs> and it's calming to people who understand that you've been there you know what it's like to do these things when you are negotiating an SDS agreement for example I mean the people of Villarica need to know that you've been there before you know what you're doing and I think the people do know that about me so before we take our first break you mentioned relationships what, what are some of the most important relationships for Villarica and what would be a good relationship um, to have uh, it, to be a mayor well first and foremost I think the 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 best relationship you can have for Villarica is with every other council member. And of course, there's no question that I have that. Um, next would probably be staff. You need to have a great relationship with your staff. And then immediately right outside of that would be your uh, commissioners for each of the, the counties. Um, you got Ann Guider in Douglas County uh, on our side, on the Villarica side, and then you've got Clint Chance on, on, the Douglas, on the Carroll County side. Uh, and then the two chairpersons, and right now we have uh, um, Ramona, uh, I'm trying to remember her, Jackson Jones, I, I just lost it for a second, uh, and then Michelle Moore over in Carroll County, uh, Ramona's in Douglas County. Great relationships with both of these people. In fact, I've had any number of meetings uh, with Ramona. In fact, you know, we have a really good relationship, so that's probably why I keep remembering her first name. Gil McDougal. Well, one of three candidates for mayor for the city of Villarica. Today's the last day for early voting. You can do so in Villarica at Powell Park, whether you're uh, living on the Douglas County side or the Carroll County side. You can go to Powell Park and cast an early ballot uh, there today. Election day is Tuesday. We're going to take our first break and come back and talk more with Gil McDougal, Community Voice, brought to you by Tanner Health System, Oak Mountain Academy, here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. At Oak Mountain Academy, our daily schedule includes convocation, prayer, and the Pledge of Allegiance. By doing so, we build a family-like community where all students grow and flourish and personal faith is encouraged. Through community service and a historical approach to biblical study, our students are taught the value of the warrior way, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Oak Mountain Academy, we are a family creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care 
isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. Eight forty six. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one oh six point three. And this morning we are streaming live on the News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page. You can see my guest Gil McDougal, one of three candidates running for mayor in the city of Villa Rica. As I do talk about the uh, Facebook page, we can take a peek at it right now. Derek Newton has asked this question. He's actually brought up this topic uh, for a lot of our guests, whether they've been uh, the Carrollton Council and Mayor, uh, maybe some uh, uh, county. Uh, guest that we had on earlier in the year. Villarica government has been improving in diversity. What is your platform to continue to improve the diversity of hiring and leadership? Well, I I, I certainly think diversity is important and uh, we don't have any real aims uh, one way or the other. We, We were really looking for the most qualified individuals for every job. I think we have a very diverse council. I mean, we have two women on the council uh, there's only five members right now. There are only four, uh, and there are two females running in, in ward four. Uh, so you could very well have three females on the council. Uh, you have a black female who has been there for years and years. And, uh, I think it's a, a hard worker, uh, for her constituents. Um, and I think that within the, uh, the staff, uh, it's widely diverse, um, so I'm, I, I absolutely believe that we continue to hire the most qualified people for these jobs. And uh, we do have an eye toward diversity, but I, I wouldn't say that it's, there's like a priority for that. Um, but I think that we are just naturally uh, diversifying, and I, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. It is a good thing. We, we've done other shows, and you know, maybe a candidate just talked about their, you know, how long they've been in the county or their families, you know, five generations back of Carrollton. And I believe they see that as a strong point when, when they're talking about it. But you can see how, since we are a growing community, and Villa Rica maybe even more so than, than Carroll County as far as uh, you know the growth, um, percentage growth, and that it's coming in from other, other places. You know, people are coming in. I, I do wonder if any kind of talk like that it might offend them. I mean, does it alienate those people that are coming out from um, – you know, different communities. And in considering that, uh, do you think Villa Rica is represented as well, considering that, you know, the, the, the newer, uh, the, you know, the, the new community that Villa Rica is becoming? Do you think that's represented well on council at this point and mayor? I do. I, I do think so. And uh, again, I leave that up to the voters uh, and those who choose to qualify to run. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you have to put your name on the ballot and go out there and make an effort and then have the people elect you for it, uh, for that position. So, but I do, and I, and I do leave it up to the voters and I don't find, uh, I never find that anybody is offended, uh, by that. Uh, and if you are, then you need to, to get out there and vote or put your own name on the ballot and, and see if you, if, if your idea is, is more popular than somebody else's idea. Um, and if it's not, and it probably won't be, then I suggest that maybe you find a way to come along with what's going on because change is coming. It, it it's always coming, and, and that's it, the change. And I think that the when, when and people have told me they are offended uh, about previous guests on here talking about just you know I've been here, I'm, you know vote for me because I've been in this spot, I've been in this city, my family's been here forever. So they're like, well, mine hasn't. So you kind of alienate me. So they have said that, but but you say change. And you know, change is coming, and that's what they think they are, the people that are coming in, that they are that change. Well, and they, they may well be. I've, I've lived in Villarica for 45 years my whole life, but I, I've never said to anybody, you need to vote for me because I've been here for 45 years. I have suggested that a lifetime of commitment to a community makes a difference, and I do believe that it does. Uh, but I have also suggested that experience and what I bring to the table today matters more. Uh, being here for 45 years is, is not a qualifier in my mind, 
but it is a part of my story. And I think that that does matter because part of being here for 45 years is that you know a lot of people and a lot of people know you. Um, so I, I think it's relevant, but I'm not suggesting in any way that that is, a, uh, that, that, that's a, that is the qualifier for doing this job. Before I go to our final break, would you have sought this job had uh, Jeff Reese not chosen to seek uh, re-election? No. Uh, why not? Well, I never signed up to be mayor. I never thought that that was in the cards for me. Um, the, this, this came on kind of sudden. I mean, Jeff has spent, a, uh, you know, I, I've gotten to know Jeff uh, very well. He spent a lifetime. Uh, in public service, uh, in recreation, and then as an elected official. And, you know, it's time for him to re- retire. His decision, his, his wife retired, and they want to spend some time doing some other things. And, and as I said earlier, this job, it, it requires a lot of hours, and it requires a lot of commitment. And uh, Jeff probably would have continued doing that. But I think he thought he had an opportunity to retire uh, and – and uh, he did that, and when he did, I had to consider whether or not I would step up and do this job. And um, I'd I'd been on the council for three years, and I knew that we had a good thing going. We had a good working relationship going, and that I could be beneficial to moving our agenda forward. Uh, and that's why I stepped up to do it. I would not have done it otherwise, no. Gil McDougal, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program, one of three candidates running for mayor for the city of Villarica, also on the ballot in this race, uh, Dominique Conte and Michael Day. And uh, again, early voting is going on today. Today is the last day you can do it at uh, in Villarica. If you wanted to save the trip coming down to the Carroll County Elections Office, you can do that at the Powell Park uh, polling place if you uh, live in Douglas and Carroll County. We're going to take our final break. Come back, hopefully, with about six or seven minutes and uh, encourage your questions and comments to post to the News Talk 1330 Facebook page during the break. Or when we come back, you can call us, 678-601-8255, 678-601-TALK. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. Oak Mountain Academy has offered a challenging college preparatory education for over 50 years. With over 500 graduates, we have maintained a 100% college acceptance rate. Over 90% of our students earn acceptance to their first choice of college or university, and over the past five years, our students have earned over $10 million in scholarship offers. Our students are creating a legacy. Come, be a part of our family, and create your own legacy today. To learn more, visit us at oakmountain.us. Six minutes left in the morning's program. Community Voice brought to you by Tenor Health System here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. I'm Colin Worthington. Good morning to you uh, watching us on the News Talk 1330 Facebook page. Gil McDougal is my guest, one of three candidates running for mayor for the city of Villarica. Today is the last day for early voting. Election day is Tuesday. Uh, again, six minutes here. Let's try and cram in all the issues coming up in Villarica for the next six years. What are what are the first things that will be on the plate for uh, for a mayor to to assist with in the coming maybe two years? Well, we'll continue working on uh, infrastructure. That's been uh, a priority. That has been uh, what we have had to focus on for the last three years. We've been able to do you know other things as well, but infrastructure. Um, repairs and maintenance and upgrades as we continue to grow that's going to be a top priority Um, we're also going to be uh, working on a second industrial park we have an industrial park but it is full Uh, so we have been uh, working on uh, a second location and i 
and we have some ideas, we have some details, we have some things worked out, but uh, I've been off the council now since uh, late August, so I'm not involved in the executive sessions and the, you know, the private discussions. I don't quite know uh, the, how far in it we are, but uh, that's part of what's crucial about getting elected and being able to get right back in there, being able to hit the ground running, is that a lot of things were going on behind the scenes uh, in negotiations that I had to step away from uh, in order to do this. Um, so we'll continue, we'll continue on those things, and those will be two big priorities. Uh, we're going to continue residential growth, and we'll need to do that. Uh, my platform has always been about growing responsibly. We're going to continue to grow, but I want to be responsible in how we do that. Uh, for, for me, uh, growing responsibly means that we provide adequate infrastructure uh, maintenance and upgrades to um, accommodate that growth while, uh, you know, preserving quality of life issues uh, and service issues for the current residents while planning for the new ones. So that, that those those will be top priorities as we go into a new term. And the p- potential for new residents. Are there any more subdivisions that were left unfinished like from the, from the bust? How many out there are out there in Villa Rica, do you think? Mirror Lake probably has more than 1,000 lots would you say somebody wanted to come in and build in villa rica would you discourage them from going someplace else until those are complete would you encourage them to well there's no question that i would encourage them to fill in those lots first um and you have uh smaller builders who can do that now a larger builder uh is going to want to do a larger tract 100 200 homes or more um absolutely i want to fill in all of those uh abandoned lots uh, plats, uh, platted lots first, uh, but uh, I would do whatever we needed to do to continue some responsible growth regardless. The North Loop Project, they've been talking about that for 417 years, mm-hmm. and it's not the first time that uh, I believe maybe council and mayor are convinced that there's a date that it's going to happen. Were you still on council when that was like officially announced this last time, that it's going to be 2022? Right. Are, are I you- was, yes. I was a part of uh, pushing for that. Uh, you're right. It's, it's been on. It's been off. It's been on. And then uh, not long after I, shortly before I came on to council, uh, it had been effectively killed. Uh, and then uh, part of, of uh, what I've pushed for in the background is uh, to get that thing back on. And through the work of, of our mayor, our city manager, uh, our local reps with GDOT, and uh, to some extent our county uh Uh, counterparts uh, we've gotten that thing back on the books uh, and we have a let date for funding on it uh, 2022 and that's not too early because we've got a lot of uh, infrastructure work to do over there uh, to prepare for that road but that road is coming so if elected mayor you would be the mayor as that as that is happening and that that will be a big project are you are you more convinced i mean are we are you 100 percent sold that it's going to happen in 2022 at this point i am i am absolutely convinced and I think that's a game changer for Villa Rica. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a it's a big deal. There's an opportunity for more residents uh, along that side, and also will there be commercial uh, spots for that as well? Uh, all of that is not quite planned out. The city actually owns a good par- portion of the property, uh, but th- that would be would border that road mm-hmm. that would be along that road. So uh, we're looking at a number of ideas that we're you know kind of uh, tossing around, but. Uh, it's going to be a game changer for sure. You have one minute. Now, let's say it's uh, election day. I do this for everybody at the end of the show. It's election day. I haven't cast my vote yet. and I've got like you know two minutes left to go to the polling place. I bump into you, not anywhere near the election grounds, but you have the opportunity to say, hey, Colin, this is why you should vote for me. Uh, you know, Give me a minute. Why, why should uh, we cast our vote for Gil McDougal? Well, I've worked diligently and hard for the uh, residents of uh, Ward 4 and for the, the city as a whole. I never did one thing for for uh, the residents of Ward 4 that wasn't good for the entire city of Villarica. Uh, I'm serious about the work I do. I'm committed to the work I do. I'm committed to our community. Um, I'm for low taxes. Uh, and I'm going to continue to do everything I can to protect the financial future of the city of Villarica. Part of that is making tough decisions, and I'm going to continue to make those decisions. But I need your support. I need everybody's support to go out there and vote for me. Um, I, I want to continue doing this job, and I want to work hard for the citizens of Villarica. I can't let you elaborate on this, unfortunately, but did you vote in favor of rolling back the Millage rate this past time? I wasn't on you the council. You weren't on the council at that point. 
shoot, just missed it. Gil McDougal, good to see you. Thanks for coming up and talking to us this morning. And if you at home missed any of the program, it'll be on the podcast form on our website at Newstalk1330.com. Of course, the, the Facebook program will be on Facebook forever. So if you want to go back and watch that, you can as well. Thanks to Joel Brock, camera work today. Thanks to Steve Graddick for pressing buttons. Again, thank you for uh, to you for listening this morning. And I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Last day to vote early is today. Of course, Election Day is Tuesday. Then tune in to KISS 102.7 or News Talk 1330 FM 106.3 at 7 o'clock Tuesday night for all Election Night coverage. Have a great weekend.